still dark in here. It's, you know, we're not, we're not doing a daily thing, but we're on day two here. We got a lot done yesterday. And uh, this is uh, some of the stuff I just kind of wanted, wanted to show you what, you know, what goes into putting an air, an air reel in or an, a, a, an airline system. I actually found this in 2017 SEMA. Uh, Kevin Brown, you know, the detail of Kevin Brown introduced me to the guys from Prevost. Uh, it's a company. This stuff all comes from. Most of it comes from France, is where where it's where it's made, I believe. Uh, and so we have uh, Prevost Snowflex hose. That we're going to be doing. This is the same hose that we have up in the uh, uh, up up uh, coming out of the hose reels. We're going. Mike's going to make some whips, so we'll capture some footage there for you. Uh, we have various valves. We want to be able to shut off each hose reel. Uh, as you know, in case you needed to swap one out and you still wanted to use, this, use the system, pretty standard practice for like a real shop. I mean, this is a this is a bougie shop, so we probably don't need that. Um, but we got to get the air from the from the lines to the hose reel somehow. Uh, we have some uh, ear clamp protectors, so these will just help to terminate. Uh, and then we have our various uh, fittings. The the cool thing about the Prevost and how it mounts. Uh, this is what I, one of the things I like about the system so much is you have these these um, uh, wall clips, and so this is what Mike will be using to mount to the to the I guess they're not pearl ends, but to the trusses up top, and then it clamps on on the pipe. You can see we're doing a 25 millimeter pipe, which is just shy of an inch. You know they make all different sizes. We don't need one inch lines for the for the the, the compressed air that we're going to be plumbing throughout here, but. I think one inch looks the best, so that's why we upsize from a half inch to one inch. And then the, you have various, we have various T's and other fittings. Uh, these are all, they look like they're plastic, but these are all black. Uh, I don't know if they're powder coated or anodized, uh, but they're aluminum fittings. And Mike will show you how these things work. It's a very shark bite like. I know shark bite is a is a particular brand, but it's a it's a shark bite like fitting that uh, we have various uh, T's. Yeah, you get the shark bite type compression fitting. Um, we have various T's, 90s, unions, uh, and then what we do, uh, we actually cut this down to six and a half foot lengths to make it shippable. If you were to buy a Prevost pipe, they come in 19 feet, seven inch sections which, you know, for most garages, you only need, you know, you may need 30 or 40 feet tops. Uh, the problem is, you know, if it ships in a 22 foot or 23 foot tube, uh, you're having, you're a minimum $400 freight charge to get it to you. And so what we do is we cut them down to six and a half foot lengths, which is what the maximum size we can get it to, uh, to ship it via UPS in a re at a reasonable rate. Uh, so all these parts and pieces, we're probably going to need to have uh, Ted overnight us some, um, or we may be bringing another pressure washer up, so we, we'll probably have to bring some more up from OG. We had to make a few adjustments on the airlines. We'll show you what we're going to do in here. Uh, we, have to make, uh, we have to make an adjustment on the fly of how we're going to get air to these reels that we're going to be putting here inside of the wash bay area. Probably unnecessary to have the air reels in here, but we're going to put them in here anyway. So we, we designed it and set it up. We also need to um, we also need to get a, a regulator as well, which we'll show you all that stuff later in the week. Uh, but yeah, Mike's working on the ceiling, and uh, we're going to keep plugging away at the air system. All right, so we're working on this project here at getting the hose reels mounted, which is generally one of the first things we do. You want to work from the ceiling down in a in a big garage like this. Luckily, the lights are already in. Um, we're, uh, we're prepping for flooring and all of that, but Mike's getting the hose reel set up. We've got four air and four power that need to go up roughly 24 feet on the ceiling, flanking our lift. Uh, and I want to show you a little bit about what, or a little bit of, talk a little bit about what we're doing with these reels. I always like to debadge them. Um, but these are Cox hose reels. I actually found this company. Uh, in uh, Las Vegas, I was running around the Apex show, which is the industry heavy show. I was literally like doing a light jog early in the morning and um, I was in, in search for hose reels and I found this company that made some cheap stuff and they said, oh, you need to go find, I told them what I was looking for, you need to go find the Cox reel booth, this tiny little booth. And uh, that's where I found, I mean, they've been making these things for a hundred years, so it's not some new discovery. 
Um, but that's where I found the hose reel I was looking for for OGHQ at the time when I first you know, wanted to put some stuff in the ceiling that Mike and I did with our Prevo setup. They've evolved a little bit and that we've worked with Cox to update these. Uh, and, um, and so we now stock three different colors. We stock blue, which is their standard color. We have black made and then we have a, a, like a light medium gray done as well. We're doing all black reels in here to kind of match the black ceiling. Uh, I'll take all the badges off and use some, some adhesive remover, some Tarex, get them set up. But uh, the first thing that's a little different on these uh, is that we spec these with a different spring. Uh, the power cord reel is pretty standard other than doing, doing black. Uh, but the air hose reel uh, has a different spring that's designed to hold our much heavier uh, Prevost hose that we're going to modify and put inside of the reels. Uh, the other thing that we spec these with, we have uh, Cox do their best um, stainless swivel, which adds about 40 bucks to the cost. Um, but since we've, uh, since we've done that, um, we've seen, um, I just think they look better. Obviously on, a, on an air hose reel, probably not super important to have that, but on, the, on a water reel, we definitely want the, we definitely want the ability to have the, uh, the, the stainless swivel. Uh, and so the other magic thing about these, these are from their easy coil line. We'll show you in operation later on as we get these mounted. Uh, when you release the hose uh, or release the power cord, it doesn't whip across the room. There's a nice slow controlled movement. And so when you combine the, you know, the high quality Cox drum uh, plus adding you know, their, you know, the custom powder coat color like black and put in your hose or power cord of preference, we end up with a much better user experience and much better product. Uh, so Mike, we're gonna, Mike's gonna show you how, to, um, how he's putting these on the ceiling. He made some, some plates. We're gonna paint those plates and get these suckers up on the ceiling. And then we have a couple other spots that are gonna be mounting them as well. Two, in the, two of each in the wash bay and one more over on our, our cabinet array setup. So uh, we're gonna get working on these now. So what we're doing is, since we've got wood members, um, wood roof joists, we are trying to mount reels up there. So the only way to really do that is to made base plates to bolt the reels to. And then I'll put in some blocking in between the joists. And then I've got, I had to drill, lay out and drill all the holes for, so you can see there. So be blocking here, blocking here. So I'll lag bolt these through. And then there's the base bolts for the reels here and here. So I've got four plates, quarter inch plates. So right now I'm just laying out, getting them all pre-drilled. And then I'll, and I gotta do, left right because the, the electric goes on the outside so I got to do them flip flopped for left and right side. So anyway just drilling all the holes then I'll get them mounted up there painted and then we can mount the reels. All right Mike so hose reels. Yep. We've got a couple of problems. Yep. First problem is the lights. Yep. So the lights are centered on the expansion joint basically. They're, yeah they're, they're centered, centered on, on the, the in the bay between the bay. Right. But yep. the lift is set up where it needs to be in proximity to the cabins. cabins right. Uh, but we want, so we have to make a choice. Do right. we put our hose reels and power cord reels symmetrically with the lights? lights or the lift. And I, we have we to do, do the, the lift. lift. Yeah, absolutely. So from the ceiling view, it's not going to look as good, but from a yeah. lift view, it's going to look better. Symmetrical. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're coming over the edge of the plate, it's going to be 24 inches. Um, from the edge of the where the lift is, right? Yep. Uh, and then we're also having to uh, shoot. So, so the the, the hose reels are going to be a little further Towards distant the in the back yep. than they are in the front, but it will still look symmetrical yeah. in the same plane. Because we want to don't want to interfere with when you pull the hose, we hit a light, so right. we have to so shoot the gap. How, how the are you going to get that measurement from the ceiling? So you're laying them out on the floor. Right. I'll reference that wall. Right. So that yeah. that'll be my distance. I'll measure this edge here subtract two feet and that'll be my distance as far as the side to side and then we know we're splitting between truss or on truss but uh joist two and three here and six and seven there so because that's on this side this side doesn't matter um you know if you're pulling so if we're pulling the hose or that the power way. cord this way or that way doesn't matter because the lights aren't in the way right but on this side it this plane we want to shoot the gap between the lights so that way we have room where you're not smacking right. the light every time right. you... And if he's going way out there, he can always pull the hose straight and down walk and walk out. Yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So, 
I think that'll look good. So the others are going to be out here, yep, roughly in this position. Yep. So and then we'll set them. We'll set the uh, we'll set the stops at John's maximum whatever height, height he wants them. Yeah. yeah. His re whatever his reach is. Correct. Yep. Okay. Cool. All right. I got one bad that can't get off. Two stickers off. No sticky left behind. Look at that, Bryce. That was a good one. I got it. Don't you worry. I got it. Got a special magical debadging touch. We don't want any badges on our black hose reel. Oh, dang it. I was on a roll there. See what they did to me there? They put it underneath that, underneath that bolt. Ah, come on, bro. Should have left the badges on. Can't see them from 20 feet in the air. Unless they're bright yellow, which they are. Key, the key to success in life, Bryce. I don't care whose garage this is. Treat it like it's your own. Treat every project like it's your last. Words of wisdom from Uncle Maddie to you. Mike, what are you doing? Quit screwing around. So we're working on getting our air hose reels set up and power cord because Mike's mounting them on the ceiling. Uh, so what I'm working on doing here is getting our Prevo Stoflex hose. So we order these hose reels, like I mentioned, we, we special, the, special order these and we get them with a very specific spring as well as without a hose. So that way we can put our own, our own hose in. I just didn't like any of the hoses that Cox was recommending. And so what I'm doing is loading up, putting my anti-vibration clamp on, getting our hose pre-wound, pre if you will. Need a little bit more slack. But it's a bit of a process, each one of these. You gotta, First sheet. We, we need to put a swivel fitting on the end of our, our hose because you can't, we can't, um, what do I want to say? You have to, uh, have to twist this fitting on. There's not a swivel fitting, so you have to put that on before we mount the hose and then go through this whole process. So there's two ends of vibration clamps, one on each one on the inside, one on the outside. You just kind of have to smash it in place. I don't have the right tools to do this, but... <clears throat> Guaranteed I'm gonna get a blood hand here in a minute. So stay tuned for that. I know it's a bit ironic that I wear a Bessess Garage shirt and yet I take the badges off all my stuff. Can't explain it to you, it's just, it's just the way it is. So we gotta do it. So you got the spring here, which helps to keep the hose from getting jacked up. We take our anti vibration clamp from the inside. <sighs> three down, it only took us three hours. So now this is where we, it allows you to set your height or set your distance from the, you know, the hose remains extended. It's important for, making sure that you don't wind it up to 24 feet because the hose rails are at 20, 23 feet, I believe. Oh boy. 
kind of at the end of my productivity curve here, Bryce. Okay. Falling off? It's like a bad not, slope not, after a certain Not yet, not yet. I'm not quitting yet. I get at least three more hours in me. I'm gonna hold this on there for the time being. Got a debadge, de gooped, semi clean hose reel. Taking an intermission, Bryce. We're gonna yeah. cut Swiss tracks for Matt. Oh no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, We're gonna do the last two after Matt's done with me cutting Swiss tracks. So I'll I'll be back. So we got all the reels installed yesterday, and right now I'm just doing the rough plumbing for the Prevo. So I'm putting T's everywhere there's a air reel, and then we have to consider we're gonna run air, another air reel down that way, so I've got it plumbed and elbowed over. I'll have to uh, kind of do an offset to go through, shoot the gap through the trusses there, the steel truss. And then we're gonna come, end up coming down here. I'm gonna come down here, put another T in for this reel, and then T off and come down this uh, drywall, this drywall column. And then we come down, come across, and then poke through that wall down there to get, to tie into the compressor. And then we also have to, there's gonna be a couple of air reels and electrical reels in that room, the wash bay room, so I'm gonna have to tee off and catch those also. So, a lot of Prevost plumbing going on. Can't, we can't put the air hose rows. No, it has to go. Reels. They'd have to go over here. So we're talking about putting air hose rails over here. Because if we do the air hose rails here, it's just not going to work. It's going to be hitting the ceiling, and it's going to be like all the way out here. No good. No, no good. They, they, don't, they can't do that. Let me go grab a power reel and see what that looks like. Power that looks that looks good. Yeah. All right. Being with the flange as we can. Mount these puppies then. Let's go. Do we want to mount it upside down so that the electrics on the right? Uh, it only does good. You know what? I was going to tell you this, by the way. You should talk to Cox about making a left and a right. Yeah. So that on layout they stay the way they're supposed to be. You know what I mean? If they could do that, that'd be yeah. awesome. And you should you should be the only. Uh, they won't let you do that, but. Be nice if you could be the only provider of a right and a left. What are you thinking? Electric for sure. Yep. Okay, I can get those mounted. And how 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 close to those uh, tile columns do we want them? Like, like close? close, an inch, two inches. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Do this. Do that if side first. That. See what that looks like, and then that'll dictate how far this side goes. Okay. Is this side we can put wherever we want? So they're touching. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll make the spacing the same. And then we need air on those columns now. Uh, I, like I totally that. agree because there's going to be no air in here. There's going to be a wall here or a door or whatever. So I, I think there would be awesome. I mean, they're, yeah, you're never going to use them, but I don't know. I guess with the drying system, he might not. But if he's blowing out mats or whatever, I don't know. Yeah, it just looks cool. We don't use half of it anyway. I need. We need the Mosmatic mat holders. We'll make a list at the end of this, what's our, we'll be back here in two weeks. So what we're doing is um, 
using three eighths by inch and a half lags. So right now I got them all laid out. I made a little cardboard template, lay them out. I'll pre-drill and then uh, get the bottom lags installed for the slots on the, on the reel, slide the reel in here and then I'll put the top two in and then we'll get it all plumbed up, leveled up. And I guess we decided we were thinking about doing air reels here, but it was too much, too busy. So now we're rethinking. We're probably going to put them on the columns on the back side there. So, all right. So the, the bottom ones are slotted. So bring them out about like that. So drive them all the way in and back out a little bit. And these the other thing too Mike with these because the bolts are like right behind the cord once I get it kind of up there I end up pulling all the cord out so it gives me room to get back there with a ratchet and a wrench. The unfortunate thing about these, if there is one, the only drawback is installing them. Because the, the way the base plate is, it's, uh, it's, not, it's behind, behind the reel itself behind the, the edges of these, these flanges and it makes it kind of tough. You can only use a ratchet on two of the bolts. The other ones you have to use a open head wrench. Just takes a little patience. Well, if it was drywall, for instance, you'd have to cut the drywall and then nail in backing between the studs, then reinstall drywall, mud it, and then you could have something to mount them to. But these are pretty heavy. And then on top of that, you're pulling cord. So they need to be pretty firmly planted. Otherwise, I mean, you could de definitely couldn't use drywall anchors or anything like that. It has to be in a wood member of some sort, either like this or a header. So this is ideal. This is about as solid as it gets. But if you were mounted on a wall, you'd, yeah, you'd want to you'd nail in or screw in a backing between the, between studs, because you can only hit one stud because there's a four bolt flange back here and they're, they're not far enough apart to hit two studs. So you definitely have to, you could catch one, one stud, but if you're, unless there's a, unless you have a, a big post inside the wall, then you could do it. But and if you're building a house or a garage from scratch, it'd be ideal to get the layout ahead of time, know where you want them. And then when they're framing, have, uh, have them install the backing and then, you know, have that done based on a, 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 a you know, a drawing so that they, and then just double check that they put them exactly where your drawing says they should be. And then when you go, to, when you get drywalled, you can just measure and know exactly where the backings are. I would do it with pressure washer, with reels, everything. That's if you're building from scratch. When we do Matt's garage, when he builds a house, that's what we'll do. I'll have everything already figured out. Unless he goes, he's probably gonna go maybe some special construction, in which case it's gonna be uh, concrete core and foam on the outside or furring strips. So I have all that right there. All right, so a little trick with cutting cord. Never cut it like this because you're likely to cut the insulation enough where the insulation on an individual conductor will fall loose. So what I do is I go, I go parallel with the conductor just deep enough that I score it and then I can tear the jacket open and then I just use a pair of cutters to, to cut it. Last thing you want is your cord arcing out. Then you got the filler in here to cut, which is these little paper wrapped strings, I guess.
we go. Cust. The next thing we'll do is we'll bring the cords down to, you know, a, re a reachable height. Adjust those. Minimally high, just so we, because you don't want to block in the glass. About there. So what I'm doing is making a cardboard template just so I can, you don't have to hold this up and try to mark it with a Sharpie. It's easier just to make a template real quick, and then hold that up, center punch where the holes are, and then pre-drill, and then you can put your bottom two bolts in and hang the reel. It's much easier than trying to hang onto it up there and mark it with a pen, because inevitably you'll mark one hole and it'll move a little bit and you'll mark the next and then you'll be off layout. So this is this is a much easier way to do it. Unless you got a second person like hang on to the reel for you, and maybe you could do that one, but still this is it's much easier. So I just grab a piece of cardboard. Even though Kyle already drew all over this, I just take the reel, put it to the bottom edge so it's flush with the bottom edge of the cardboard and mark it. And I just trace here so I cut that off. This one's the one that's tough to get to, so you can only mark part of it, and you just have to trace the rest with your three-handed, so we know it's like this. That's it. Then, then we just take this and up here doesn't really matter. Just want a defined edge here. it all right maddie so what do we say bottom of the bottom of the real base plate to top tile edge yeah i mean it doesn't have to be exact you want me to hold it up there and look you want to see how it looks first i know i think that'd look good i know i just use my phillips screwdriver so we know this is bottom edge is already it's square with the with the um base plate since we're doing bottom edge here uh, it's gonna hang over a little bit, Matt, the base plate. The holes are fine, but the base plate will hang over just a little bit. I think it's fine. Yeah. So, now that we know that, gotta make sure it's the same on both sides. So, five inches, five and a half. I don't know, four, four inches, sorry. Four inches, five and a half. So that gives us three quarters on either side we need to be. Now we know where that is. Take this. And we mark our holes. All right. Pre drill. Same thing I did over there. I'll, I'll run the bottom two in for hanging on the slots. Then I'll drive two in the top end and all the way out again so that way they're easier to send home with by hand. See what I end up doing, Mike? See this? So I measured, so this base plate on this side is flush with the edge of the beam because this one's kind of hidden anyway from all this. So when you look at it visually from the front, it's flushed out over here. So I flushed it out here because that's what you're looking at. This backside you don't see because the reel's kind of hit, it's hidden behind the reel. So rather than, and the bolts are still centered anyway, which actually worked out perfectly. I just went an eighth inch that way further than I needed to, so it, so it was flush. It's all those little details, you know? I'd just do it like if it was mine, at my house. All right, so we had to make a game time decision here in that the way we originally designed it, this column was a lot bigger. Uh, and so the, I think it actually worked out for the better. And then we've got our two power cord reels, which are a little narrower, not quite as tall, tucked up in the corner. Uh, and then if we ever are gonna do some like dry ice cleaning or something in the future, it's good to have, I think good to have air in the wash bay or for some like pinpoint, um, maybe if you're trying to blow off some like an engine bay or something like that, this is the place to do it. And so then we mounted them up at, uh, you know, medium male height here, so that way they're up and out of the way, but I think they look great. So, hose reels, we got one more set to do somewhere. We're not 100% sure we're gonna wait for the Sonic Array to come, but that's, uh, that's, a whole lot of, that's a whole lot of reels, that's six reels. So far. Yeah, yeah, so I'm pleased, this looks, this looks fantastic. So, 
just uh, running the, so the compressor's in that room behind you, right? So the airline's coming up and then through the wall over to this wall here, then it comes over and feeds all these reels and it's gonna go beyond over past Matt. We're gonna do some more reels over there. So what I did was there's a T where it comes out of the wall. It tees off, goes to feed that side. And then I come this way, come up this column. And then we're gonna come across, uh, way up here, come across, poke through this wall. And this will feed the two reels in the wash bay over there. So it, doing this rather than running it through the room and across the speakers, it would be too busy. So we decided we'd come up here and keep it kind of out of the way. It'll still look real clean up here. Cause you know, we like seeing it, but it's, there's kind of a lot going on in there so already. So just thought it'd look cleaner to run it this way and across the, uh, the roof joist. And then we'll hit those, I'll come over and hit that column over there. Tee off, go shoot down to the uh, reel and then over to the next column and 90 down to the second reel. So in the equipment room, just finishing up the compressor hookup. Uh, it's wired in. I've got the Alto 3 mounted here, um, our stainless steel flex line, isolation valve there. So I'm just hook making the final hookup to the Prevo system. It's all plumbed in the main part of the garage. This is the last part of the hookup to do. So um, because the Alto sticks out a little further, I end up using a, a, one of the Prevo offsets. So I'm just getting that all dialed in. It's, it's just about done and we can, we can test it out. Testing the compressor out, seeing it build pressure, and then I'm gonna open that valve. I have one end of the Prevost open, so we'll, any you know, shavings or from cutting all the pipe, it'll blow out the end way up high in the ceiling. We'll clear it out, and then uh, and we're done. Here we go. Oh wait, I gotta open the regulator. Get this bad boy all opened up, and then I'll rush out. I just cleared everything out, pressurize it, and then blow all the stuff out. Cool. Check that off the list, Mike. So air compressor setup, is it, oh, we can't turn it on yet because it's open. Well, we had it on, okay. pressurized it, and then cracked the valve open, blew the lines free. Okay. So we have a little bit left to do over there. We're out of some materials that we need, but yeah, yeah essentially it's done. We'll have to maybe do we chase some leaks. Hopefully not, Yeah, but I'm going to pressurize it, cap that off. You just might have to reseat. Yeah, one yeah. Or two I mean, to, as they expand and contract a few times, they seem to weep a little bit. So you go yeah. back and tighten here and there. Okay. So this is a five horse uh, silent piston compressor. Uh, so inside of this shroud, inside of this area is like a, I think it operates around 600 RPM, mm -hmm. 80 gallon tank, just horizontal, horizontal tank. It's looking like an 80, is that an 80 or a 60? I think it's an 80. What in? So it's a something gallon. It's either a 60 or 80 gallon. It's good I size. It's that. a good size. Uh, and so this operates at about, I'd say somewhere in the mid, mid to high 60 de decibel range. Yeah, it's pretty quiet. I mean, you can, you can hear it. And our mic's right here. It probably sounds louder on our mics than it does in person. Yeah, it's not as loud as the, air, as the pressure washer. It's certainly not as loud as this thing. So, so we're in yeah, good shape. Exactly. So uh, this doesn't have a regulator on it, but it does have a dryer. And so you have, uh, you have your roughly 30 CFM deliverable five horse, horsepower compressor, air dryer here, which you can turn on or off if you want. Um, I don't like this. Mine has a little different display. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the air dryer, think of this as like, it's like a dorm room refrigerator just on the side mm -hmm. of the thing. Yep. Cools the air to 32 degrees. Disadvantage of a, of a refrigerator dryer, you gotta plan ahead. Yeah, you, you gotta have in, it on. Turn really. it on. Yep. Get it up to get Purge it cool. lines. Yep. And, um, but for this application, it'll do really well. 
And so then we need a regulator. There's no regulator on this. And so we have a way overkill. Alto 3. Yeah. But I like the big one, you know, because yep. it looks prettier. It does so look nice. This flows like like 150 CFM or something like that with half inch lines. But I like it because it looks pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Same argument. We don't need one inch lines in here either. But um, I like Again, it. Again, it looks nice. Yeah. And then that, shoot, I bet you we have another 80 gallons of air just in the lines. I don't know about that, but we have, there's we got a decent chunk line. of air. I, I think I installed way. about 225 feet so yeah. far, and we still have another 60 to go. So we got some air in the lines yeah. as well. And yeah. So this thing won't run very often. No. But what we'll do is we'll just leave it powered up and leave the all the line system aired up. Yeah. That way you can go and there's grab no reason some to of the various hose reels. Yeah. So then we come out. You ended up using the offset pipes yes. rather than doing a bunch of 90s right. weird crap. Right, because there's blocking or backing here for drywall, so I had to go around that. So they have a short or little 18-inch little offset pipe with a bend it, and you can twist it to whatever angle you need. Yep, I used it here too because the Alto 3 sits out away from the wall further than the clamps for the Prevo. Yeah. So not only did I get an offset for that clearance, but it also looks trick because it gets it... And then you've shown there. everybody how those clamps work and yep. how the unions and all that stuff works. So yep. the airlines come up, go out, and they come out this way. And so where's it coming out? It comes out over here. And the T. So this T right here comes okay. out and feeds the loop for the, our reels. Okay. And then we go up here, behind here, and up, and that feeds the two reels in the wash bay. Yeah, so and the original plan was to put reels we were gonna put the air reels here. And so the original plan was we were gonna come through the wall and then have the lines run and do some trickery here, but we decided the header here, there wasn't enough room. Yeah, the clearance was like, there was like a, almost an interference fit. It would be like a 16th clearance maybe to the top of reel to the, to the ceiling and it would just look jammed in there. And now so we decided to put them here. And there's gonna be glass here too, so we didn't you wanna, wanna block the that, whole yeah. view. Right. Yeah, and the pipe, it would look too busy anyway, we thought. So it looks cool coming in through here. So, I'd do a little uh, uh, kicker here to, to get up back into the joist because there's, there's, again, there's a header, a ridge header that comes down, a ridge beam, so we had to go around that. But it looks cool. I like it. I like so how it, it looks. Tees, so it tees off, Yep. comes down, and so we put the air reels on this side. Yep. Which, you know, a little overkill, but looks but cool. But he's already already planning ahead because he's got his air buck, his tire filler there so he can go out and fill up tires Yeah, up if you front. don't want to bring like, a car in, if you're just driving past. Well, it has equipment too, so tractors and stuff like that. You don't yeah. want to bring that dirty tractor in here. You go out there and fill mm, it. Yeah, gotcha. And so then we have the, can I call this the Matt Mormon signature move? I'm sure somebody else has done this. But I like having four reels on yeah. all four corners of the lift. Yeah, it looks good. And so we had to make some concessions, which you can't tell. The, the wheels are actually a little bit closer to the front, front than, the rear. than they are the rear, but remember they're outside the, the width of the car. Yeah, yeah. And so- That's the main thing. So, you know, when I, when I, when I did, the, remember when we did the first garage, I had manifolds all over the place, yeah. I never ever used them. Yeah, no. And so I stopped doing manifolds inside, like on wall manifolds, and because you're always gonna use these. So these will service this area and then as you're polishing a car, you can grab power and walk around. Yeah. When we come back, we'll swap these out for um, for uh, the Pro Lock. The locking, yeah, sure. Now, keep in mind also, uh, one of the real advantages of the way we set this up, these springs are special. So this is, this is not the same, you can go on Amazon, you can buy a Cox reel, I've been yelling at them for years, take the freaking hose reels yep. off of Amazon because people are buying the wrong stuff. Yep. Uh, and so these have a different spring. They have a different stainless swivel, which we don't need, but it looks prettier. Uh, look these nice. are black powder coated. We spent hours debadging these done yeah. things. They put yeah, a bunch of paper stickers on there. But then these are all the easy coil variety. So when you let go, it doesn't whip, whip the hose across the room. Uh, or smack your car, that's the worry. Right. And I so all the hose reels in here are of the easy coil version with a special spring that's designed to hold, one, it's for the height of the, of mm -hmm. the roof. Secondly, our hoses are heavier than the, than the right. stock hose that yep. they calibrate the spring. And we're up there, that's uh, 23 that's 20, feet. That's 22 and a half, 23 feet right there. Yeah. Yeah. And so the last setup that Mike is gonna work on, we just don't have enough unions, like there aren't any to be found in the US. And so we're gonna run the line across here 
and then there's going to be another closet here and so we're going to put uh, we'll, when we come back in a few months we'll cut yep. put backer put a backer in this wall uh, and then we're going to do one more air and power reel here we already have you know power uh, but that that would be for the tire you know cars are going to be stored back here on this side of the garage and so having air that that'll serve it'll get to pretty mm -hmm. much everywhere in this area and fit with the 50 foot 50 foot hose and i'm using those offsets too that we have we have enough offsets but for every truss i'm going to do two of the offsets to come over top of it It'll so you'll union the offset in the middle yep, and then yep. and two two in the offsets that's why yep. i need a bunch of unions instead of doing a bunch of 90s yeah that that's and yeah, that, the offsets yeah. are cheaper than the 90s right for sure and i think that i think the offsets look cool yeah and so that's that's air um we don't have a drain uh the amount of use that the compressor is going to get it's just it'll just drain it into a cup once every six yeah, months it's not going to be much. um you know i was adamant that we had to have like a like a magnetic float drain and yeah, i remember we did it on your first jenny and it never really got any moisture. it never broke the uh what is it, it never broke the magnet yeah, um, yeah the, the float did never come up to drain <laughs> right yeah. yeah so it's i've kind of just aired on the side of just go on the bottom of the tank and twist the knob yeah that's once in a while and put it in a cup a cup of the paper towel plus you it. don't want it's going to end up being rusty water anyway you don't want to dump it on your floor automatically anyhow right so now the air dryer will dump some condensation out the back but but that'll it, be clean water anyway it won't be rusty tank water yeah and it's not enough to it'll be little sprinkles on the floor yeah. so remember this is a dehumid i mean 100 pint 100 punch 300 pints of water that this can remove a day so there's 300 pint yeah. ultra airs in this building. Yep. It's Combined with, uh, I think these are 24,000 BTU. There's seven 24,000 BTU mini splits, mini splits, which do yep. a decent job dehumidifying. So it's dry. In here. It's going to be dry as can be. Yep. And we're in Georgia, which isn't super humid no. in comparison. At to least Florida. not now it isn't. That's for sure. So that's our air setup, and uh, Mike's been working on this for t dozens and dozens and dozens of hours. Yeah, I spent a lot of time on the lift. <laughs> yeah. Probably more time on the lift lately than on the ground. Yeah. We were talking about that last night. Not the car lift, the scissor lift, this thing. So he's going to go up and get rid of those power cords here, and we're going to keep uh, cleaning up here. We got a few things to button up, and uh, but the uh, the air system started in the very er, very beginning, first and it'll be it. probably the first thing we started and the last thing we finish, and that's part of the subtlety, you know, in order for Mike to get all those lines plumb and square and hopefully not leaking um it takes a lot of time to make it look like it existed here yeah, and, and between all that we're working on projects stopping and starting and doing working on the lift and working on the pressure washer and then yeah you know, so there's a lot of in-betweens but the yeah the mainstay's been air so seven air reels doesn't seem like much but you know, it's appropriately expensive for the amount of time that it takes to do. I mean, each yeah. one of those reels is six, seven hundred bucks. Yep. So anyway, thanks for watching. Check out the rest of the series. Super helpful. Come to us, buy the Cox reels. We custom set them up with custom hoses, custom fittings, custom swivel, uh, different colors with gray, black, blue. We can order in whatever color you want. It just takes forever. So if you're in gray, black, and blue are the, the main colors that we stock. Uh, we can also get the full stainless ones if you want those. It doesn't make a lot of sense for those. Yeah. Those are you know well over a thousand bucks. But um, Cox reels are, I think, truly the best hose reels. Uh, one of the best in the world. I'm sure there's some other ones out there that I don't know about that are great, but they are. I think fantastic. they are. I think they're the best. I've 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 had experience with Gleason and Real Real Craft and Prevost, and I think these are better than all those by far. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Make sure to check out the rest of this series. This uh, project's coming together.